Hi, I'm Kim Messendrup, and welcome to our mini webinar, Call Me Group's mini webinar on Clarison Revenue Models. We get a lot of questions about how revenue recognition works in Clarison, so we thought it'd be nice to put together a little mini webinar describing the different uh, revenue recognition models that are available in Clarison today. Quick caveat, Clarison is working on adding some amazing new features and functionality to revenue, so we'll probably have some updates for you in the next few months. Let's dive right in. So what I've got here is I've got a, a project with a number of sub projects, each set with a different one of Clarison's billing type or revenue recognition model. Now, why is this important? Well, if you are in an organization and you need to forecast revenue or you need to track budgeted versus actual revenue, uh, the way that you measure that revenue can change based on how you manage your financials or based on each contract in your, your, your organization. Today, Clarison supports the following billing types or methods for tracking that revenue. Uh, we have a mixed mode, which is a combination of the following modes. We've got fixed price, which is based on the project, fixed price based on milestones. We have time and materials, and we also have a uh, special one I'll show you here at the end. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk you through each one of these modes and describe how they work. So let's start with fixed price project. Now, the idea in a fixed price project, I'll open this up in a new tab. The idea with this is that I have a fixed fee that I'm going to charge or I'm going to recognize a certain amount of revenue when the project is completed. And that's really the key phrase, when the project is completed. And the way this will work is I have to have the billing type, which is a field on the project, set to fixed price. And then there's a column over here called fixed price, and I have to enter a value there. So let's say our fixed price is going to be for $10,000. So what I'm planning on is one is $10,000 in revenue when my fixed price project is marked as complete. And so what, what's happened is I've planned my project. It's active. It's not complete yet. And my due date for my project is set for October 6th. And when I scroll down and take a look at my financial planning, I'll do a quick refresh here first. And when I scroll to the right, I'll see that corresponding with my October end date, I have budgeted revenue in the amount of $10,000. And this budgeted amount is going to follow where my project scheduled due date is and the fixed price amount. And that's going to be budgeted until I complete my project. When I complete my project, let's go ahead and do that. When I mark this project as complete, what's going to happen is it's now going to recognize that revenue as actual revenue. And you'll see that my actual end date is set to May 3rd. Now, if I scroll down here and I look at, I may have to refresh here. Yeah, let me do a quick refresh. You'll see that I now have $10,000 in actual revenue in May. The actual revenue will only display when the project itself is marked as complete, and it will populate in the month or on the date that I have my actual end date here. If I were to change my actual end date, let's say I actually ended this in, let's say June 1st, instead of May. Now, when I refresh this, what we'll see is that the actual revenue will now populate in June. It will follow whatever the actual end date is configured as in the project plan. And there we go. A couple of other things to point out is that when I'm looking at my financial planning panel, I have a separate line here for fixed price. This is where all of my revenue, my budget, and my actual is going to show up on this section, which is different from my labor section and from my non-labor. So it's broken out as a completely separate line item. So just to illustrate this a little bit more, here I've got a chart here. And when I'm planning a fixed price project, the way the revenue will be is it'll be zero revenue until I get to the very end of the project when the market is complete and I will recognize 100% of my revenue. So revenue curve will look something like this. We don't actually see a lot of customers using this mode of recognition because it requires that you mark the project as complete. And usually you want to recognize the revenue 
as soon as you can. And even if you've got maybe some administrative tasks you need to complete after the fact, um, you want to be able to recognize the revenue and then go ahead and perform some administrative closure or some other things. So we don't really see this one used a whole heck of a lot. Now let's look at fixed price milestone. Fixed price milestone functions pretty much the same as fixed price project, except that it behaves on the milestone level. Whereas with a fixed price for the project, I would assign the fixed price at the project level. Here I would assign it at each one of the milestones. Then I would go through and any milestone I want to add a price to, this one's going to be $1,200. I can add fixed price to each one of these. And this is a lot nicer because it's more flexible. It lets me schedule uh, multiple milestones. I don't have to have a price on all milestones. I may go through and have a couple where I have no revenue and they're just there for the sake of my work plan. This also gives me the flexibility to manage contract conditions where it's, let's say we need to invoice 50% uh, of the revenue, recognize 50% of the revenue up front. So what I can do is I can add a milestone We'll call it 50% up front. I'll move my milestone up. And I'll schedule that for the project start date. Give it zero duration and I'll enter whatever my 50% is. Let's say it's $30,000. And that way I can forecast 50% of my revenue uh, right at the beginning of the project. Now, just like the um, fixed price project, the revenue is going to follow wherever the scheduled due date is. So I'll right click and open this in a new tab so we can take a closer look at it. And I'll refresh the financial panel here. Okay. And you'll see in my financial panel, I still have my non-labor and labor, but on my fixed price items, I've got fixed price milestones. If I expand this, I can see every milestone in the project, even the ones that have no revenue associated with them. And the revenue that I can see is aligned with where is the due date of that particular milestone. And just like fixed price for the project, when I mark one of these as complete, Whatever the date is for the actual end date, that is the date that the revenue is going to show up. So I've got this plan for April, but now I have an actual end date in May. If I refresh my financial panel, you'll see that I've got my upfront billing, or I'm sorry, my 50% upfront planned in April for 30,000, but my actual actually lands in May. And I can manipulate that by changing my actual end date. This is nice because it lets me forecast my revenue and mark it as budgeted or complete in my work plan, which is pretty nice if your project managers are the ones managing that process. Now let's take a look at the revenue curve for fixed price milestone. So we'll start off with zero revenue and as you complete each milestone, you'll see a little bump in the amount of revenue recognized. See that uh, across your project until you get to the end and you've recognized all your revenue. So it gives you sort of a stair step recognition profile. Let's take a look at time and materials. Time and materials is really pretty basic in that what happens is the revenue forecast follows your planned work. So let me open up this project, time and materials, in another tab. And I've got resources assigned to different tasks throughout this project. And what you'll see is that as time goes on through the project, where I have resource time planned, each hour that I have planned reflects in budgeted cost for each resource. And I can drill down and see each one of the tasks. Um, and then what I'll see is the amount of budgeted revenue based on the rate that's set up on the user's uh, bill rate or the bill rate that's set up on the project. And that will go on through the entire project. I've got budgeted cost wherever I've got uh, planned work from my resources as well as budgeted revenue that goes on through the rest of the project. That budgeted revenue turns into actual revenue when I have timesheets logged from my resources. So as timesheets come in, we'll start to see the actual revenue increase as well as the actual cost. Pretty straightforward and pretty simple. 
from a revenue curve perspective, we would see this as really probably more often than not, depending on your plan, a little more of a linear curve as time goes on, you accrue more cost and more revenue as the project proceeds. And that's time and materials. We also have a mixed mode. Mixed mode means that I can mix the mode. So in this case, I have a billing milestone with revenue associated with it, fixed price. And the rest of these are going to be planned as time and material. So let's take a look at what this project looks like from a financial perspective. And what I've got is I have a one milestone. This is the only milestone listed here under fixed price items that has a fixed price attached to it. And this will treat this will treat that revenue just like the other milestone types. When I mark this as complete, whenever my actual end date is, it will show that as actual revenue. At the same time, what I have going on here is I've got the budgeted rev budgeted cost and budgeted revenue following my resources through the project. Now this is pretty interesting. The um, actual cost here will be showing for time that's planned on the fixed price milestone, but I won't see time and materials revenue. I'll only see the time and materials revenue planned for tasks that are not part of that. Let me show you here. So any time that I have budgeted for resources on these tasks, which are part of a fixed fixed price milestone, you'll see the revenue, I'm sorry, the cost accrued in there month by month. But I won't see any revenue for those timesheets because the revenue comes from the fixed fee. However, any of these other milestones here, any other work in my plan, because this is mixed mode, this will all be treated as time and materials. So when I schedule time on these tasks, I'll see the costs as well as the revenue modeled as a time and material engagement, which you'll see down here through these months here. I've got budgeted revenue assigned to these resources because they're being treated as time and materials. And those are the main modes of forecasting in Clarison. Now we've got one other mode that we'll use sometimes when we have a client that needs a lot of granularity in their forecasting. And the rules used for recognizing revenue across these other types are not really going to do it. So we need to do it manually or we need to do some customization, customizations and custom configuration for special business rules. Let me show you how we'll do this. So if none of the other modes are going to work and you need the project managers to manually schedule when the forecast revenue and the actual revenue is, you can use another one of Clarison's features, non-labor resources to do that. So first I need to make sure I'm in a mixed billing mode. And what I'll do is I'll come down to my project and I'll add a non-labor resource and this one will just be called revenue. And what I'll do is I can manually forecast my revenue. So I'll say I'm going to forecast in April 1200 in revenue. In May, I'm going to budget, say, 3000 in revenue. Now, there are no business rules driving this. It's a very manual process, but it lets me have very granular control over how I'm budgeting. And you can do the same thing for tracking your actual revenue. I can say I'm actually going to recognize 1300 in revenue that month and submit it then you'll see that that rolls up into your financials for your project here this is also the mechanism we'll use if we're doing customization some some automation using custom objects where we have sophisticated business rules we'll just use business rules to go through and update non-labor resources to track budget revenue and actual revenue if you do do this, one trick you'll need to do is you'll need to force the billable rate, the rate card, uh, to zero for any labor resources. Otherwise, you'll be calculating for um, time and materials, revenue, as well as your, your manual setting here. And there you go. Those are the current revenue recognition models that are available in Clarison. There are some interesting ones coming soon, including a percent complete and a not to exceed time and materials. And as those get released, we'll be happy to do another one of these webinars. Thanks for listening in on our Clarison Revenue Recognition mini webinar today. 
If you found this video useful, but you have some more questions, we're happy to help. Email us at ppmanswers at callmegroup.com and we'd be happy to help you with a 30-minute consult where we can answer your questions and maybe we can see what we can do to help you out. And if you want to increase your Clarison skills, check out Colme University's Clarison Configuration Masterclasses, where you can take your Clarison skills to the next level.